We're going to take a look at a case that uh, is actually an example where uh, we're going to be using CFD to try to validate a particular design for a manufacturing facility. In particular, we're interested in understanding uh, whether or not we would be within the threshold for SO2 concentration. And we're going to look at this plume study by taking advantage of the fact that the, uh, the data that we're looking at are a test case that we're using to validate the approach so that we could use CFD to potentially uh, validate an initial design to be within EPS, EPA standards. So let, let's start by just quickly looking at the data that we have. And uh, there's some things that are not important. What we're going to start with is we actually have 16 design parameters where we're looking at variation in exhaust. And this is the exhaust of SO2 gas from a manufacturing plant based on prevailing wind conditions. So this was, again, a systematic way to show that there isn't a huge impact uh, based on what we're seeing here and that the total amount of SO2 gas uh, 50 meters from the point source isn't necessarily going to be beyond what the EPA has deemed acceptable. So we'll just open up one result to give you an idea of kind of what we're looking at. So uh, we're just going to look at it the way you know, you would do this today. And in fact, if you're only looking at one or two solutions, this is kind of how you initially look at uh, the validity of, of your result. You're going to open it up, uh, perhaps look at uh, a slice. And in this case, you look at, you can see the slices right there at the exhaust. And we're going to evaluate the SO2 concentration. And you can see just right there at the exhaust, the, you know, that you can see there's not much of the SO2 gas coming out for the system, I'm going to add a couple more contour levels just to see some of the fine structure around the SO2 gas. And now this might be our best first image. And in principle, one would likely go through and take advantage of the fact that this is a, a style file. I'll just pop something out of the desktop and call it RR. It really isn't important. OK, so the idea here is that I have one result now worked up. The problem is I have 16 plus results, and I probably have between five and seven views that I would need to show uh, to validate this approach uh, relative to the typical way that these things are validated, which are, are using more experimental methods. So let's, let's now think of this in the context of a project within TechBlock Chorus. So I'm going to then bring in my results. I'll create a new project. And uh, I will create a database to put this in. And the reason I might create a database here is that I may have multiple projects uh, all around SO2 concentration studies that, that I want to look at. So uh, in this case, I'll call all of them SO2. And uh, the project I'm looking at is uh, Plume. And uh, this is just uh, EPA test. Again, this is a very simple case, but uh, I think that it's worth using this as a start point. Uh, we'll use a file crawler to bring in our results. We'll just quickly navigate to the uh, actual results. And this is the same directory I was just working in. And the other thing that we're going to do is just take a look at uh, the results we have. Remember, these are each individual file. And you'll notice that there's something SE in this case, or the southeasterly winds. Uh, shows up in all the file names, and then depending on the wind, it changes. Okay, so that's kind of like a, an initial condition. We'll do the same thing for northeasterly wind. And the last one is SO2 concentration, which uh, in this case is denoted by SO2 underscore. And the underscore gets us to the actual concentration, and this is um, moles per minute in effect. So once we actually bring that in, the next thing to do is to associate it with the files that we have in the directory, which in these case are PLT files. And these PLT files are just the raw simulation results. And uh, okay, we'll add those in, and we'll go next. Uh, we'll probably want to just, uh, for simplicity, we'll call this SO2 instead of SO2 underscore. And once we hit finish, 
what the course tool does is help us bring all that information. Think of it as you have lots of files out there in many directories. This can bring it all into one simplified environment so that you can really start to understand what are these data telling you. So we'll go ahead and view the data. And as you remember, we started uh, with a style file that we created. We called it RR. We might as well take advantage of that work. And uh, let's go ahead and see what those data look like. So now we're going to do a, a deep dive, take a look at uh, the results from the simulation. And, and this is kind of for one solution. I can quickly take advantage of or take a look at what the initial conditions were. Now, if this looks like a good start point, let's go ahead and create a, uh, a number of images based on this. So we're going to go back into TechBlock Chorus. I'm going to grab all the solutions that I have. And I'm going to create a series of plots now based on this RR style. And that's going to be done in the background. You can see it's actually, if I click on the jobs that are running it, you can see that in the background now it's creating a series of plots to populate my database. While it's doing that, let's go ahead and bring in some derived quantities. These are quantities that we have uh, created from the simulation, and they're based on some of those integrated quantities of SO2 gas at different stations. So we'll browse to the appropriate file, which is in the plume migration. I believe it's output from integration is the, the file here. And uh, we'll make sure it's going to the right directory. There is a file name. Again, we're going to ignore the file name. And you can see that because the names are consistent, it understands that the database already includes southeast, northeast, and SO2 gas. What is also included in here are the integrated quantities. That is the downwind 75, 50, and 25, which are 25, 50, and 75 meters away from the point source. We're also looking at integrated quantities at different value or elevations. In this case, uh, we have an elevation at 5, 15, and 30. And you know this is a good example where, in fact, uh, you can modify what's shown on screen. In this particular case, it looks like there's a misspelling. We'll go ahead and fix that, and we'll continue. So now I'm going to bring in the, the derived quantities, and my data is now more complete. I actually have the integrated quantities, and I'm going to try to understand what they're really telling me here in a second. But before I do that, let's go ahead and bring in those results that we created in the background. And we're going to just try to use that to quickly evaluate what's going on with our system. So here are the results in question. And they're being shown in terms of northeasterly and southeasterly winds. But we'll change that to SO2 concentration. And you can see that you know, under reasonable prevailing wind conditions, you can see what happens as we increase the amount of SO2 gas. And in fact, the amount of SO2 that's being released downstream goes up significantly. And you can also take a look at what happens as we increase the wind speeds. So very quickly, I look uh, across, say, a southeaster or northeasterly wind of 10 knots, that uh, you can kind of see that red plume moving along. If I wanted to see these, just these data, I could look uh, at these, and I can start to say, well, how different, you know, what what was the net effect of increasing the prevailing wind conditions? And I do that by just selecting. Uh, one file. In this case, I may want to show the labels just to make sure that I know what I'm looking at. So I'll look at northeasterly winds and the 50 meter down wind, and it looks like we're looking at increasing concentrations, and the winds are staying the same. Um, nonetheless, you can see, you know, what the net effect is of increasing the in concentration, and I can show a difference and very quickly see just how different these images are. Now, this is just giving me a qualitative difference between my base image, but I can do the same thing by viewing the data as well. So now we're actually going to look at, in our visualizing tool, we're going to evaluate uh, a number of these results. And, okay, let's we'll make sure. So as you recall, we had already done this once, and we're looking at the different SO2 concentrations. And we can, we can then go through, and let's say, for example, we wanted to uh, change the contours a little bit to get that fine structure back. If I like this view, I have the opportunity to then take this view and propagate it across my solutions. So I'll just do that by synchronize, and that'll actually synchronize those contours across. 
So in addition to the qualitative data, which I show you here, in fact, I may actually want to do a quantitative difference as well. So I can show a quantitative difference between my base case and each additional case. Again, this helps me understand what uh, the results are telling me when I look at the integrated quantities. So let's go back then, based on this information, let's look at those integrated quantities by evaluating the dimensionality. So we'll look at northeasterly winds versus SO2 concentration, and we'll look at that downwind 50. This is the downwind 50 integrated SO2 concentration. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to color this by an elevation of 5 meters, which is uh, where you and I would be standing. And based on that information, we're going to fit the data using a surrogate model. We'll use a quadratic response surface. And we're going to show that surface here so you can actually see how the data fit. And you can kind of get a sense as we in, uh, increase the uh, wind conditions, we actually decrease the amount of SO2, integrated SO2, as you might expect. What's interesting to note here is that when we look at the data, you can see that, in fact, the amount that it decreases is not nearly as, as significant as I might have thought going into this before I actually looked at the data. So if I want to then quantify that data a little more, I'll look at these data then as uh, a function of, say, uh, northeasterly winds again, or SO2 concentration. And uh, we'll look at the downwind 50, which is, again, the most important. And perhaps we'll group these by the northeasterly winds. So you can see uh, what the net effect is for northeasterly winds. And then we'll sort them by SO2 concentration just to get lines. Now, the, uh, the, the bumps here that you're seeing are because we actually have a couple points where we change the northeasterly winds and the southeasterly winds. If I want to get rid of those points, I just quickly filter them out. And then I'll apply my surrogate model so now I can see just how well these fit. And if, for example, you can see that in this case it is off my fit. So I may actually want to grab this point here and uh, view an image very quickly to see, okay, well, does it make sense? And maybe I don't have the right data in play. So what I'd want to do then is go back to my visualizer. We'll go back to the, the first case. And maybe what I need to do is zoom out so that I can see uh, more downfield and add a couple of images that help me see what that plume really looks like. And once I have that, I can say, OK, well, I'm going to save that as a template. And we'll call this RR2. And I'm going to use this template to create some additional images. So I'm going to go back into TechBlock Chorus. I'm going to grab all my solutions. And I'm going to create some additional plots now with the RR2 as the base style. And that's going to go through. It's going to run in the background. As that's running through, it's going to be creating images. While it does that, let's go ahead and look at all of these data files then using that RR2, because we actually want to create a quick image that we'll use uh, perhaps for our report that would validate that these results are accurate. So this is going to load all the cases into our visualizer. Now, it's important to point out that these data are relatively small, so loading the data into TechPlot isn't that big a deal uh, because we're looking at 16 files simultaneously. Um, it does take a second to, to do that. While it's doing that, we can still go through again and try to understand uh, in more detail uh, what's going on with these results. So uh, we had shown you very quickly that you can look at these uh, data by looking at downwind 75, but we might want to apply the same type of approach. But instead of looking at... Uh, downwind 75, perhaps it's more important for us to look at an elevation of 5 meters. So now we're looking at an elevation, and we'd want to look at that in the context of northeasterly winds and SO2 concentration. So this profile, which uh, again we can show a surrogate model here, this profile shows how the system is responding as a function of elevation. And again, uh, there are some anomalies here where the integrated quantity of SO2 gas does not fall on that surface, so that suggests that perhaps this data point may not be accurate. So I may want to dive in here and understand what's going on. While that's happening, it looks like my, my project's 
continuing to complete. So within just, you know, we're, we're talking about within 15 minutes of taking all these results, I'm really diving into the meat of what's going on with this system. Now you can see all the, the data I've already loaded into TechPlot 360. I remember this is a superset of the 360 tool. And I'll just make this a little easier to see. And uh, just put everything in focus for a moment. So now we have all 16 results in TechPlot. And I can kind of zoom out and look at that, that plume migration very simply. And again, I'm looking at uh, SO2 gas concentration. Here's my low concentrations based on different wind configurations. This is more wind, uh, higher concentration, higher concentration, higher concentration. So this is just a very simple way to kind of understand. And the beauty of this is you can see what the net effect is. It kind of makes sense qualitatively as well as quantitatively. So going back uh, to Chorus now, if I right click on here and view images, I now have both of the images available to me, both the focus in right here on the smokestack or the exhaust port, as well as kind of a zoomed out view. And I can try to understand how things are changing within the system. So that's how one can use TechPlot Chorus to evaluate a performance prediction, or in this case, a uh, prediction study on SO2 plume migration. Thank you.